Good afternoon. I am Minister Renita Downing, and I am bringing you joy and greetings from First Baptist Church, Gilmerton, where the pastor is the Reverend Dr. John L. Ashby III. We are located at 1617 Shell Road in the city of Chesapeake, Virginia, and you can catch us on Sunday morning streaming live on our Facebook page, as well as on our YouTube channel, John Ashby. If you would like to give to our ministry, you can do so by going on to the Givelify app, locating First Baptist Church Gilmerson and giving your donation that way. We wanted to come online during these difficult times to leave you with some words of encouragement. Let us pray. God, our Father, we come to you today just thanking you for waking us up this morning. Thank you, O Father God, for being healthy and strong. Thank you, O Father God, for your protection. Thank you, O Father God, that if we do have any type of illnesses in our body, O Father God, we know that you are a healer and we're looking forward to where the body and the natural manifest with the spirit. O Father God, we ask that you will be in the midst of every word that is spoken, asking, O Father God, that everyone at the sound of my voice, O oh Father God, will lead this message feeling encouraged, feeling hopeful, O oh Father God, and knowing that you are still in control. Lord, I don't take this assignment lightly, and I ask that you would just strengthen me to be able to deliver your message to your people. These and all blessings we ask in your name. Amen. Hallelujah. Like I said, we wanted to bring you a word of encouragement on today. And our thought for today is what's in your house. We will be coming out of Second Peter, the first chapter in the third verse. And I will be reading the New International Version. Second Peter, the first chapter, third verse and the New International Version. And it reads, his divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who has called us by his own glory and goodness. Hallelujah. During this pandemic, there has been so much division amongst believers, Christians attacking Christians, churches attacking churches. Uh, there's countless and numerous amounts of discussions, whether church should still be open. Um, are church leaders operating in fear? Are pastors using wisdom? What is going to happen to the church of today? If our traditional services are canceled during this pandemic, the Bible records such a time as this in Mark, the seventh chapter, where the Pharisees were attacking the disciples with the intent of destroying Jesus um, for disregarding the tradition of cleaning their hands and partaking in ceremonial unclean food. They were so focused on their man-made religious beliefs that Jesus addressed it and told them in verse 13, of that same chapter that their traditions had made the word of God of no effect. The biblical canon, the inspired word of God never submits to man's tradition. It's not what's outside of you that defiles you, but what's inside of you that defiles you. I asked God what words of encouragement he had for my family and I and what he wanted me to convey to his people. And he said to me, just like the church of Ephesus in Revelation, the second chapter, we have become so religious that we have allowed our man-made religious routines to impede or outweigh the word of God and the freedom that comes from having a relationship with God that we have now entered into a Pharisee mindset and forsook our God-given right to experience a true relationship with him. We are to pattern our lives after Jesus. Our ministry should mimic the ministry of Jesus. And we know Jesus didn't have a pastor study. Jesus didn't have um, his services the same time each week in the same place. He didn't have his bio read before he began to minister. And Jesus wasn't afraid to go out into the world and tell them about his father. Have we been so focused on the church building, the bylaws, our titles and our tags that we've lost focus on the plans and predestined purpose from God? which was always the great commission to go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the father and of the son and of the Holy ghost. So brothers and sisters, I came on today to ask you what's in your house. Let me tell you three things you need to do to truly discover what you have in your house. Number one, during this time, God wants us to forsake tradition 
and teach the unadulterated word of God. In the Great Commission scripture, Matthew 28 and 19, the word says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded. What if this pandemic is an opportunity for us to rid ourselves from the bondage of man-made rituals, processes, and procedures? Maybe God is saying it's time for us to get so engulfed in his word again that we are seeing signs, miracles, and wonders flowing in our houses. Put the traditions down and let's hide the word of God in our hearts so that we won't sin against him. You cannot have a relationship with anyone that you don't know. And you can only get to know him by spending time in his word. Turn off the TV, put down religion and pick up your word. Point two, sacrifice socializing for sanctification. Yes, coming together is good and uplifting and assembling is necessary, but don't let your good be evil spoken of to come together to socialize, collect money and not be concerned about souls being saved and the kingdom of God being lifted was never what God had in mind. Has our religion drawn us closer to a building and the organization, but landed us further away from the plans and purpose of God? We look the part, but are void of the very spirit that was sent to dwell in us, to lead us and guide us into all truth. We are to live our lives by presenting our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable. What agreement does the temple have with idols? We are to walk in God's statutes. We have the spirit of adoption as sons and daughters, not the spirit of slavery leading us to fear. We are children of a king. Inside of us are the fruits of the spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness, sacrifice, socializing for sanctification. We have a great opportunity to do just that with social distancing. Point number three, religious belief should be released for a true relationship with God. Religious re beliefs should be released for a true relationship with God. God is a spirit and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Like the Pharisee, Christ wanted them to know, like with the Pharisee, excuse me, Christ wanted them to know and understand that it's not what's outside of the man that defiles him, but what's inside the man that defiles him. And inside of us should be the spirit of the living God. Inside of us is revelatory wisdom of the living God. Inside of us is power of the living God. Therefore, we should not fear during this pandemic. Just because you're not entering into a church building doesn't mean that it lessens your power and the authority that lives inside of you. God wants us to close out the cares of the world and seek ye first the kingdom of God. He wants us to press towards the mark of the high call. He wants us to lean not to our own understanding. He wants us to trust him. He wants to be in a relationship with you and I. Because when you're in a relationship with God, you understand that during scary times, what Satan meant for evil, God meant for good. You understand that all things work together for the good of those who love God, who are the called according to his purpose. We also understand that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God will deliver us from them all. So when I ask you the question, what is in your house? I will tell you what's in your house. Everything that you need, everything you are fully equipped with all features, giftings and anointings required to carry out the assignment on your life. But you need to read the owner's manual to know how to use them. Hallelujah. Acts 1 and 8 tells us, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost comes upon you and you have the power that heal blind eyes. You have the power that heal paralytic legs. You have the power that heal the woman with the issue of blood. You have the power that told the sun, moon, and stars to rise and be still. You have the power that lives inside of you that raised Jesus from the dead. Again, I say to you what's in your house 
You have God's authority inside of you. The authority to call those things that are not as though they were. The authority to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. The authority to cast out demons and set the captives free. This pandemic is an opportunity for the children of God to raise up a standard. This pandemic is an opportunity for Jesus' bride, the church, his people, his body to draw closer to him and return to his first, to their first love. Hallelujah. We have to reevaluate what we're doing in his name. He needs us in a dying world telling them about a savior that forgives sin, transform lives, a savior that's a mighty rushing wind, but gentle as a dove. We need to tell the world that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. We need to tell the world that this pandemic is going to pass because the word of God tells us that after we have suffered a while, the God of all grace, who has called us to his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. You have everything you need in your house and anything you lose or have lost, the potter will put you back together again. But these benefits are for those that are heirs to the king. If you know that you are not a child of a king, if you know that you are, have unrepented sin in your heart, if you were to lose your life today, if you were to spend eternity in hell, then repeat these words after me. Lord, I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. And I believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead. Hallelujah. If you said these words, then through faith, you are now saved. And guess what? You have everything you need in your house now. Don't worry about what it looks like or how it feels. Know that just like that, you were adopted into the household of faith. Now go talk to your daddy and tell him what you need. Listen to him. He's been waiting to talk to you. Be encouraged, brothers and sisters, because what's in your house is everything that you need. God bless.